This phone will make me a million dollar. <laughs> what am I talking about? I will share with you how this one skill set can make you a millionaire in 2022. What am I talking about? Well, I'll break this down in this Vlogmas episode of the Seven Figure Squad starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And yes, we are in Vlogmas, and today is Monday. And how fitting it is to have this skill set be talked about on a Monday. But before I get started, I want to remind you our goal is to get to 150,000 subs. So therefore, we can award a church, charity, or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of you. Yes, the squad, so we can help them help people. Okay, so let's get right into it. What is this skill set that I'm talking about that can make you a millionaire in 2022? My friends, it is phone skills. That's right, phone skills. So how can mastering the phone make you a millionaire in 2022? Well, at the beginning of this episode, I talked about this phone will make me a million dollar. My first mentors happened to be Vietnamese. That's correct. When I was coming out the Marine Corps, I was introduced into the insurance industry. My first mentors in the insurance industry in Anaheim, California, happened to be Vietnamese. And with their accent, we always did these affirmations. And I was always cracking up because half of their training, half of their talks, half of what they had said, I could barely understand half of it. But to all I could understand, it was, this phone will make me a million dollar. And not to date myself too much, but this is when cell phones were just starting to come out. So pretty much everybody had a phone. And if you didn't have the phone in the office, you borrowed a fax machine. Okay, I'm really dating myself now. I had a fax machine I would make off the cabinet. Now, those things are the past, and I've learned to love the phone. And here's why. In this era today, in this TikTok generation era today, in this social media generation today, a lot of people love to communicate, hiding behind text messages, hiding behind DMs, hiding behind emails, hiding behind, hiding behind, hiding behind something else versus having the guts to pick up the phone and actually have a conversation. These days, people can slide into people's DMs. These days, people can slide into somebody's text message. These days, somebody can get somebody's phone number and send them a text. So if you want to separate yourself by showing up on the phone, by rocking the phones and showing a human side of your business, a human element of your business, that you are actually a live, talking, breathing person, hey, you are setting yourself far apart from everybody else. You see, everybody today wants to automate things, automate things, automate things. Artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence. Listen, if you're in a business where people are drawn to you, people are drawn to how you're doing things, the way your brand is on IG, you gotta learn how to rock the phones. Now, if you're anything like me, I had zero sales background. I had zero college degree, I had zero business experience. I was a door gunner in the United States Marine Corps and I'm trying to learn the insurance business. I'm trying to learn entrepreneurship. I'm trying to learn how to go out there and get a name out. And uh, if you put yourself in a position where it's just me, myself and I, isolated, me, myself and I doing this by myself, I tell you this, you're gonna have this thing called call reluctance. You're gonna be wigging out. I mean, my goodness gracious, how do I get this done? Because I'm nervous about what I'm doing. And so if you are in your head too much, you won't pick up the phone, you won't make contacts, you'll be so self-critical of yourself, you'll be over-managing yourself. Chances are you won't make those phone calls by yourself even as much as you want to. A lot of people don't because they're unable to overcome this thing called call reluctance. So how do you overcome call reluctance? You gather a group of people around you and you make phone calls together. If you are in the position of making phone calls amongst other people, you feel each other's energy. You hear other people also getting hung up on, you hear other people facing and dealing with rejection. You think to yourself, okay, I guess I'm not so weird after all. I'm not the only person here dealing with this type of stuff. So what we do as a company is that once a week we get together, we have this thing called phone zone, whether it's in person or if you feel in certain areas of, well, you know, Matt and COVID and social distancing, knock, knock yourself out, put it on Zoom and put yourself in an environment where everybody's making phone calls. You hear everybody smiling, what we call smiling and dialing and going out there chasing their dreams. And don't think that social media or the internet, people are just gonna stumble across you to 
expose your brand, your company, your business. You have to do the legwork to do this. Now, that's for some of you who say, Matt, I don't have any money for advertising. Because some people might say, well, you know, that's why I love Facebook advertising. And by the way, more power to you if you do Facebook advertising or social media advertising because now you're targeting certain people you want to talk to. But then you have to have money in a budget and you have to do A-B testing to figure out which ads work, what don't work. And if you got that type of budget, knock yourself out. But if you're broke like me, I had less than 500 bucks to get my business started. I had to make sure I called referrals. I called people that knew people that knew people that knew people follow up on connections. And today it's so much easier because you can get a lot of intel with people by searching their profile on LinkedIn, by searching their profile on Facebook or IG, get to know a little bit about them. So therefore, when you do make the phone calls, it's a lot easier to have that conversation. So you're asking, Matt, give me some tips. How do I master the phone so therefore I can become a millionaire in 2022? But do me a favor, before I get into my tips on how to master the phone, put it in the comment section below. I am a master of phones. I am a master of phones, okay? Number one, you gotta have a script. Now, I'm not asking you to follow a script line by line, word by word. You might sound so robotic, people say, who is this talking to me? And this person is nervous. Use those words, but still be you. Still use those words, but still be human. Still use those words and use the normal breathing pattern. Have a working script, and the way I, have a working script is I identify what my biggest objections are based on my product or service, and I find ways to bring those objections up front. The majority of your objections, you bring that in the beginning of your script. So therefore, you can identify a prospect versus a suspect. You can identify a prospect versus a suspect. A suspect may not be ready to buy your product right then and there. But a prospect who's in pain, a prospect who's got money, a pain who's got the decision maker, a prospect who says, you know what? I'm urgent to make a decision. I want to change this problem right now with your solution based on your product or service that you're offering me, what you got? The second part is the tone of your voice, or some people call it tonality. When you're asking a question or making a statement, for example, so how are you versus how are you? Yeah, I'm in business, or I'm in business, or yeah, I'm an insurance business. Or, yeah, I'm in the insurance business. See, same words, just used differently. One will invoke confidence. One will invoke, I'm not so sure if this guy knows what he's talking about. So what do you want to sound like on the phone? You match that by going it over and over and over and mastering these things. And for example, if you watch, one of the people I love watching are comedians. Because I watch how they tell a joke. I watch how they deliver the joke. And I think comedians is the highest form of public speaking because not only do you have to capture people's attention, but you gotta invoke a response from them. So tonality is a lot to do with your phone skills. And the biggest thing you have to have on the phone is confidence. The biggest thing you have to have on the phone is clarity. Now, if you're anything like me, if you've probably already picked it up, I'm naturally a fast talker. The way I invoke confidence when speaking to somebody on the phone is I match the rate of how they talk. So if I notice that they're talking slow, I consciously say, I need to slow down my rate of speech because this person hears certain words at a certain pace. And if I'm talking fast, that person is gonna feel like I'm hustling them. Person may not be a customer today, but they might be a customer tomorrow based on the confidence and the seeds you planted based on the conversation you had previously. So I'm, I'm a very patient guy. The reason why I'm a very patient guy because I believe in what I call the game of numbers. You know what the game of numbers says? I don't trust the outcome. I'm not hooked on the outcome. Of course, I'm looking for an outcome, but I'm more focused in on the process with the right prospects, having the right conversations with these folks. Because if I go through enough numbers, the law of averages then, if I'm playing the game of numbers, the law of averages works in my favor. And also, when you're on the phones, you gotta be fired up. You gotta be enthusiastic. You can't be boring. Hey, how you doing? I know I'm making the phone call right now, but there's, there's nothing exciting in my life until you buy a product from me. <laughs> it's, just, it's not gonna work. But say, hey, listen, man. Hey, Mr. So-and-so and so-and-so, this is Matt calling from XYZ Insurance Company, and I'd love to do business with you, blah, 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 blah. Hey, if you're excited and fired up about what you do, people are naturally gravitating to people who are fired up about life. Be excited about it because if you're not excited about your company, if you're not excited about your product or service, why should they be excited to buy it from you? I'm reminded of a story of Jeff Bezos when he was sharing about how he raised money for Amazon. Even him, Mr. Wall Street, 
with relationships, with experience, with know-how, raising money for this little company called Amazon. <laughs> he said, listen, I called 60 people. Check out what he says here after calling 60 people. Check this out. Was there a moment you thought I might not make it? The riskiest moment for Amazon, Charlie, was uh, at the very, very beginning. I needed to raise a million dollars at a certain point. And I uh, ended up giving away 20% of the company for a million dollars. Hell of a deal for somebody. A lot of people did very well on that deal. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, they, but they also took a risk, so they deserved to do very well on that deal. But I, um, I had to take 60 meetings to raise a million dollars and I raised it from 22 people at approximately $50,000 a person. And it was nip and tuck whether I was gonna be able to raise that money. So the whole thing could have ended before it even started. That was 1995, you know, and the first question every investor asked me was, what's the internet? You see, even Jeff Bezos had to call 60 people and 40 said no to him, <laughs> but 20 said yes. And he got $50,000 from the check account into Jeff Bezos' checking account to start. Amazon, and they got 20% of the company. You think Jeff Bezos created wealth for people because he was confident enough to blast through the 40 that said no, to finally find the 20 that said yes? Think about you, you potentially could be the next Amazon, you could be the next Facebook, you could be the next what, you know, whatever company that's out there right now that's smashing and killing, you could be the next Tesla, you could be the next PHP, you could be the next value team, you could be the next seven figure squad, who knows? But are you confident enough? to go out there and make phone calls and stick with it, even though a lot of people have told you, no, not right now, it's not in my cards, not that, boom. Don't let other people's lack of confidence in you erode your confidence in yourself. And last but not least, one of the things I did also was after I got done making phone calls, especially when it's around people, we went over case studies of how certain phone calls could have gotten better, how certain phone calls could have been turned into different directions, how everybody could have proved their phone call. And one of the things I did early on was I'd make phone calls with, with my phone or with, uh, the camcorder, and I just record myself. And the first question I asked myself is, would you believe you? Would you buy you? How can I make sure if I call somebody like this again that I'm better at it the second, third, fourth, 10th, 20th time I do it? And here's my last thing in terms of making phone calls. In my entire career of being an entrepreneur for 22 years now, <laughs> matter of fact, this time next month, you 23 years. I've never made a cold call. Zero. I don't make cold calls. My organization doesn't make phone calls. It's easier to make a phone call to somebody that was referred to you because instead of you invoking your own credibility in that conversation, you're invoking the credibility of the connector, the person that gave you that referral. And just so you know, some of the best businesses ever have always been built on referrals. It wasn't ads. It wasn't ad spend, it wasn't magazines, it wasn't newspapers, it wasn't emails. It's because somebody knew somebody, then knew somebody, then knew somebody. So as you're rocking the phone calls, just ask for referrals. Hey, if it's not for you, all good, no big deal. But who do you know that's just like you in the medical field? Who do you know that's just like you in the military? Who do you know that's just like you that's a professional athlete that this conversation is more appropriate for them now versus you, it's later? Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? Would you mind if I used your name as a referral so they know it's not a stranger, okay? That's how you have better relationship with the phone because this device here, compared to everybody else who's afraid to get on this phone, can separate you between everybody else in 2022. Well, there it is. I hope that this episode has helped you out. For you to check out another video in terms of your thoughts when it comes to the phones and thoughts to your endeavors in 2022, please check out this video here which is the one book that you should read. It'll help you become a millionaire in 2022. With that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments, your feedback. We might use them in a future episode here in Vlogmas of 2021. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Well, look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Till we meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue love smart and be money smart today.